Hi Year 8, welcome back to your next history lesson with me, Miss Theka. So we are carrying on with the topic that we've been looking at over the past few lessons now. Um, we are thinking today about who Jack the Ripper might have been and we're going to be thinking uh, and researching a few of the main suspects from the time and then you're going to come to your own conclusion as to who you think Jack the Ripper might have been. So as usual, you're going to need some pen and pe uh, some pen as in a pen you need a pen and some paper to write on so make sure you've got those in front of you now title is who was jack the ripper and the first thing i would like you to do is study these four photographs here out of these pictures if you had to pick one of these people who do you think is most likely to be a serial killer and why so if you were to look at any of these people who would you argue is most likely to be a serial killer out of these four people so one two three four and then tell me why so pause me now date and title in one two three or four who do you think is most likely to be a serial killer and why? So normally when I do these lessons, um, I tend to get someone who says something along the lines of, oh, you're trying to trick us, are they all a serial killer? Uh, and yes, uh, the answer is these are all um, real people who are serial killers. So the first one, if you put number one, uh, she is Rose West. She's held um, in Durham prison after being convicted of 10 murders in 1995 of young girls who she helped her husband to murder and then she um, helped her husband to bury them um, in the back garden. Uh, and she's still at Durham prison. I think she is still alive. Um, Next, number two, if you picked number two, he is Peter Sutcliffe, but he also went by the name the Yorkshire Ripper um, because he was like a, a copycat killer. Um, in 1981, Sutcliffe was convicted of murdering 13 women and also attempting to murder seven others. Three, this is Harold Shipman. People don't generally tend to recognise... Um, who he is. Um, he's a GP, so he's a doctor. In January 2000, a jury found Shipman guilty of murdering 15 people, but after his conviction, it was um, confirmed that actually he was probably responsible for the murder of 218 people. And last but not least, if you did put number four, generally people tend to to not pick number four. Um, this woman is Joanna Dennehy. She is one of only three women to be given a whole life prison sentence in the UK. She killed three men and she attempted to kill two more. So I do this task because I um, like to show that sometimes people can have a bit of a, a preconceived idea as to what a serial killer might look like. But actually, truth be told, a serial killer um, can be anybody. So I want you to try and keep your mind open when we look at some of our suspects in a second. Next thing, quick quiz. Normally we'd be doing loads of quizzes at school, but we haven't obviously really had the chance to do that. So I thought we'd just do a little quick multiple choice quiz now. So you don't have to write the question out, just write one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then write A, um, B or C as your answer or a true or false, okay? So question one. When did the Jack the Ripper crimes take place? Was it A, December to March, 1889? B, August to November, 1888? Or C, August to November, 1815? So A, B or C. Two, where did the Ripper crimes take place? A, Edinburgh, B, Liverpool, C, London. Three, how many known murders was the Ripper, uh, Ripper credited with? So how many are known as sort of the definite number? A, 5, B, 12, C, 8. 4. Jack the Ripper was not the original name given to this case. What was the original name? Was it A, the Jack Attacks, B, the London Strangler, or C, the Whitechapel Murders? Five, Jack the Ripper was not the real name of the criminal, but it was a fabrication, um, a lie that was made up by a journalist. Is that true or false? 
Six, generally what type of women did Jack target? A, Jewish women. B, lower class women who tended to be prostitutes. Or C, upper class rich women. And finally, seven, Jack the Ripper was never caught or identified and the case is still unsolved, true or false. And we'll go through the answers. Number one is B. The crimes took place August to November 1888. The Number two, the Ripper crimes took place in London. Number three, Jack is credited with the famous five murders. Four, Jack the Ripper was not the original name. It was the Whitechapel murders. Five, true, Jack the Ripper was a fabrication made by a newspaper. Six, Jack tended to target lower class women who tended to work as prostitutes. And finally, true, Jack the Ripper was not caught and the case remains unsolved. So the problem, as we know, um, the police were becoming really desperate to solve the murders. Uh, and because of this, their list of suspects grew and grew and grew. Um, it's not the case that the police didn't arrest anybody. They certainly did arrest and interview an awful lot of people, but they seemed to really struggle to prove that any of these men had definitely committed the murders. So even though from the long list um, of um, men that were arrested, there tended to be a few people that the police were, were convinced might be guilty, but that's the problem. If they didn't have the solid evidence, then they couldn't prove it. So a lot of these men um, had to, to be released once they had been arrested. So today, uh, we're going to look at five of the most uh, well-known suspects of the Ripper cases. Uh, we're going to build up a profile of evidence for all five of them and then you're going to reach a judgment as to who you think Jack the Ripper might have been because obviously, as I've said, uh, we don't know. So today we're going to look at these five. Montague John Druitt, uh, George Chapman, Aaron Kosminski, John Pisa and Francis Tumblety. What I would like you to do is, normally I would print this table out and you would stick it in, but obviously we can't do that. So I would like you to use um, your book, maybe turn it on its side to, to draw a table. If you don't want to draw it as a table, do mind map or bullet points, I don't mind how you set it out. So you need to have all five written down the side here, there, their names. Then another box, evidence to suggest this person was Jack. And then right at the very end, you're going to go back and you're going to rank them one to five. Number one being the man you think most likely did commit the murders all the way to number five, who you think is least likely. So pause me for a second now. Um, get this table drawn up in your book or draw it up however you like to do it. You don't have to do it as a table if you don't want to. And then I'm going to read through the information for all five men um, and then you can get your own notes down. Okay, we are going to start with number one. I would also like to say that if you are finding Jack the Ripper really interesting, normally when we teach um, this topic in school, students tend to really, really love it. And I feel like, because obviously I'm teaching this on these videos, that perhaps maybe it's not as interesting as it really is. Normally when I teach this in school, everyone absolutely loves it. So I feel a little bit sad that I'm having to teach it this way, but oh well. But if you are finding these lessons really interesting, I would advise you to um, do a little bit of your own research. Obviously, bear in mind some of the websites might be a little bit um, aimed for older people. So always check before you watch any of the videos um, or anything like that. But there are some really great Jack the Ripper historians that have got full websites that go into some of the conspiracy theories and go into it in a little bit more detail than I can do now. So if you are finding it interesting and you're bored and you've got nothing to do, then um, go wild and maybe you might become the next famous Jack the Ripper historian. Uh, right, so suspect one, John Pisa, that's him down here. John Pisa was born in 1850 and he was better known as Leather Apron. Let's face it, if anyone has a nickname, Leather Apron, it's not really a good start, is it? Um, he was a Polish, um, he was Polish and he was Jewish. Um, 
and he worked as a boot finisher. So that basically means that he worked with leather um, and he could make shoes. He lived at 22 Mulberry Street. A local man reported, so this is from the time, um, this man did actually say this. His expression is said to be sinister. His eyes small and glittering. His lips are usually parted in a grin, which is not only unreasoning, but it is excessively repellent. He always carries a knife and gets the nickname from a leather apron that he always wears. So if we think back to the, hopefully, the documentary Bloody Britain that you watched with Rory McGrath the other day, historians are generally quite convinced now that whoever Jack the Ripper was, he had a skill. He worked in a profession where he could use tools very well. If you made shoes during that time period, they weren't made in factories like they are now. If you were a boot finisher, you made a shoe by hand and you could work leather very well and use certain tools to work that leather with. So perhaps maybe his skills to work with leather, which is quite similar to skin, might maybe have helped him commit the murders. He's always got a leather apron on, perhaps maybe to stop any blood getting on him perhaps maybe we don't know so that's some of the evidence that we have against suspect number one john pisa so pause me now go back to the top of your table and try to get me some bullet points in that suggest that john pisa might maybe have been jack the ripper something that some of you might have also noticed is this bit here that he was a polish jew that's quite important to point out as well if you can remember i think if we go back to lesson one or it might have been lesson two there was quite a lot of racism at the time to people that had um, moved from different countries and there was an awful lot of racism towards jewish people back then as well so it was quite common for jews to be accused of being jack the ripper so perhaps maybe this could be an element of racism perhaps maybe he wasn't jack anyway the decision's yours. Number two, Aaron Kosminski. Kosminski was often described as having been a hairdresser in Whitechapel where the murders took place. What is certain is that he was seriously mentally ill. He was probably a paranoid schizophrenic who suffered from hallucinations and is also described as being a misogynist. So I've just said lots of quite big words there, so I'll just go back a little bit. A paranoid schizophrenia, um, schizophrenia is a type of mental health illness, um, it isn't overly uncommon, now it can be treated with medication and people can live with it just fine, but back during this time period mental illnesses weren't really understood, so they weren't treated properly. Um, if someone is schizophrenic, it can mean that they don't have a complete sense of reality, so they aren't aware of what's real and what's not real. They can see things and hear things, which then makes them do things that they shouldn't do. Um, and it says here you also suffer from hallucinations. So if you hallucinate, again, that means that you are seeing things that aren't real. A little bit like when we're in a dream and we see things in our mind, he would see them during the day as he was awake. And he was also a misogynist. A misogynist or someone with misogynistic tendencies is a person that hates women. And I don't just mean um, a man that perhaps maybe moans about his wife or maybe moans about his girlfriend. A misogynist is someone that passionately hates women. Um, however, it does say that Kuzminski was prone to harming himself, but not others. So he hadn't. Ha he doesn't have a previous history of hurting other people, but he had hurt himself in the past. A report from him, a man who used to live with him said he always carried his sharp hairdressing tools around with him. So again, if he's a hairdresser uh, or a barber, he would be used to using sharp knives and scissors. They could perhaps have come in handy with um, the murders. He did have mental health issues, but we know that back then mental health wasn't really understood like it is today. So perhaps that could have been a little bit of an excuse to blame it on, on him. 
Either way, there is some evidence to suggest that Kosminski might have been Jack. So use this information here and get some bullet points down for number two, Kosminski. Number three, George Chapman, down here at the bottom with a fantastic handlebar moustache. Um, his real name was Severin Kozlowski. That's a hard one to say. Kozlowski. Kozlowski. Yeah, I think I'm saying that right. Um, he had trained as a junior surgeon in Poland. So again, um, he was an immigrant. But George was a convicted wife killer. He had poisoned his wife and was sentenced to be hung until dead for his crime. Once he was killed, many in the local area started to suspect that he might also have been Jack the Ripper. George did live in the Whitechapel area during the times of the murders, so slightly different here from George Chapman. Yes, he was an immigrant, like um, we'd seen with some of the other previous people. He changed his name, uh, perhaps maybe to, to try and hide that, that he was from uh, Poland maybe so that people would accept him more but something different um, about George is that he was a convicted murderer so he had killed his wife that might maybe suggest that he had a tendency to kill women but um, something that you might maybe have noticed is this bit here <clears throat> he killed his wife using poison doesn't seem very Jack, does it? We know that Jack didn't use poison. He liked to kill the women in a very outlandish, over-the-top way, whereas poison tends to be a little bit more quiet. Um, so, I don't know. Um, but he did live in Whitechapel during the times of the murders. So, again, a mm -hmm, little bit of evidence there to suggest that maybe Chapman is someone to consider. Number four. Montague John Druitt. Uh, Druitt had been favoured as a suspect for many years. He worked as a barrister. A barrister um, is like a solicitor, a lawyer, uh, in Blackheath, South East London. Druitt's own family even suspected that he had done it. He had doctor's experience, but uh, he'd also disappeared at the time of the last murder at, um, at Miller's Court, so he'd, he'd ran away. Druitt's body was then found floating in the River Thames on the 31st of December, seven weeks after the last murder. The body was said to have been in the water for about a month. So he had been alive during the times of the murders, but then after the last murder of Mary Jane Kelly at Miller's Court, he disappeared and he had committed suicide. It was alleged that he was sexually insane and he hated women. So I think it says a lot here at the top where it said that even his own family were convinced that he was Jack the Ripper. Perhaps maybe that says a lot about his character as well. And maybe that explains why the murders stopped with number five, Mary Jane Kelly, because Druitt had killed himself, perhaps. And last but not least, number five, Francis Tumblety, another one with a fantastic moustache. At first glance, Tumblety is another promising suspect. His arrest and suicide would explain the sudden stop of the murders. So similar to Montague John Druitt, Francis Tumblety did kill himself as well. Many claimed at the time that Dr Tumblety is a perfect gentleman and he wouldn't hurt anybody. However, a claim was made that Tumblety collected body parts for medical reasons and kept them in jars, but this has later been challenged by historians. Tumblety was questioned by the police and laughed at the suggestion that he was the Whitechapel murderer. So, we've got someone who has experience at opening bodies, taking out organs. It said he collected them, although that's now been challenged. People at the time said he was a perfect gentleman. When he was arrested, he laughed. He said it couldn't possibly be him. So, mm, but then again, he did, he did end his own life around about the time when the final murder was committed. So that could perhaps explain why the murder stopped when they did. Hmm. Again, uh, another promising victim. So hopefully, 
if you need to go back and pause me so you can read that information again, you can. Hopefully uh, your little table should be full now and you should have a good couple of bullet points for each person to suggest why they might have been Jack. Now what I want you to do is just rank them one to five. Who do you think is most likely to be Jack the Ripper from these people and who do you think is least likely to be Jack the Ripper? So, okay, last thing you are going to do, um, instead of writing up um, a judgment, I would like you to design it in a slightly different way. I would like you to create your own wanted poster for Jack the Ripper. You're gonna use the knowledge that you've just collected on the suspects, and then you are going to base your wanted poster around one of the five men that you think was most likely to be Jack the Ripper. So if you um, go on Google and you type in wanted posters, it'll come up with little stencils that you could maybe use. Uh, you could maybe create some tea stained paper so it looks old, that kind of thing. Obviously check with people from home and that's all right first. Um, but this might be a nice little project to do, something a little bit different um, than just writing all of the time. So, uh, sorry, there should be a little gap between those two words there. So, first of all, you can identify some of the key features of your suspect. You can explain why you think that they were likely to be Jack. Um, you could also compare it with another person. So, you could say, um, we think that Montague John Dewey is more likely to be Jack the Ripper in comparison to Francis Tumblety because so you could compare it to two of them. Or you could do this. So this is in a green box because this is kind of like um, an extra challenge. I can't put the information on here because uh, it's too small and you won't be able to read it. So I will um, put on class charts and I will send in an email extra information about a conspiracy theory relating to a member of the royal family um, called the Duke of Clarence. Uh, it was thought by several different people that actually a member of the royal family was Jack the Ripper for several different reasons. But his information is, is quite in-depth uh, and it's um, got quite a lot of detail to it. So it's more in-depth than the five men that we've just looked at now. So some of you might maybe find it a bit more challenging to read, but if you want to um, push yourself then read the information um, about the, the Duke of Clarence and you could, if you wanted to, use information about him to help you design your wanted poster. And then if you also wanted to do something a little bit extra, could Jack have been Jill include a small section warning the public that Jack might also be female? and then you could explain why you think this might be the case. Um, and if you do do a really jazzy wanted poster, I would love to see it. Get someone to take a picture of it um, and send it to me via email, especially if you're going to maybe tea stain your paper so that it looks really old. Um, you could draw a picture of Jack as well, or if you've got a printer, print off one of the pictures of the suspects as well. Really jazz it up, um, maybe create it a little bit arty uh, to do something slightly different with your day. So I hope that all makes sense. I'll pop this video on YouTube and I will also send via email and I'll put it on class charts the extra information about uh, the Duke of Clarence if you wanted to read that information as well. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you for listening again.